Hello everybody and welcome back to the SB Gun Fun channel and to another episode of Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishment Punishments Plural We last left off here at Peter Black Peter's uh, Whaling House or his, his retirement home where he was uh, brutally murdered so what we have here now is we have to uh, we have a tobacco pouch which has the initials PC. I'm assuming it's Peter Carey's um, tobacco pouch, a sailor. The initials PC have been crudely burned into it. Sailor's work. So you know Peter Carey's a captain, right? We also have an item that was removed. It appears to be a box from the shelf in his house okay so um hmm I'm trying to remember okay it's, yeah, sorry I got distracted work um yes tasks so we have to organize an ambush with Inspector Lestrade. The mysterious intruder might return tonight to finish what he has planned. So that was where we left off. So let's speak with the inspector. Well, Mr. Holmes, what do you think? I think that we are lucky. And why is that? Because of last night's attempted break-in. Oof, you've lost me. It is very probable that whoever came here hoped to find the door open. They tried to force it with a knife blade, but they failed. What will they do? Why, return tonight, when they will be better prepared. Aha! So what do you propose? We shall remain on the outside, near the window, where we stand the best chance of catching sight of our visitor. Well, gentlemen, ready your pistols. We have a long night ahead of us. A long night. So, okay, so what did they want us to do? Window. Window. Go to a window. Can we go to a window? Okay, there's, there's a back window. This window is locked from the inside. I do not see any attempt at a break-in. Okay, so I saw another window out back. Oh! How come that didn't pop up when I ran by? Hmm. Alright, here we go. This looks like the perfect hiding place. Crickets. Shh. Did you hear that? There's someone there. I'm going to collar him. I'll be right behind you. Alright. So let's get out there. Run, Sherlock. Run. Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes. Oh, cutscene. Alright, my fine fellow. Who are you and what are you doing here? You're detectives, I suppose. You imagine that I'm connected with the death of Captain Carey. I assure you I'm innocent. Innocent? And what are you doing in his cabin? Shall I tell you? You came to retrieve what you had lost after killing Peter Carey. But we were here, waiting for you. What is your name? John Hopley Nelligan, but I... I didn't... Do you deny that you came here yesterday? 
No, but... but I... yes, it, it's just that I couldn't... I'm tired of this. Off we go to the yard. Tomorrow, I'll see that you're put in front of the judge. What? But you can't! I'm not... it's a terrible mistake! Enough! You can explain all of that to the judge. You're coming with me to the yard. But... In light of recent events, it seems evident that your coming here was unnecessary. All the same, I'm very grateful to you, Mr. Holmes. You are welcome, Inspector. But please don't be too hard on our young fellow. I would like to question him tomorrow morning. Wow, that case advanced pretty fast there, so... Young Nelligan. I'm trying to remember his name. <laughs> so we need to examine. Interrogate suspect at Scotland Yard, John Hopley Nelligan. Examine the belongings of John Hopley Nelligan in the evidence room at Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard. Good morning, Mr. Holmes. Can I help you? Good morning, Constable. I would like to speak to the fellow who was arrested at Woodman's Lee last night. Ah, the young man. He's waiting in the interrogation room. You can go straight through. His belongings are held in the evidence room. Thank you. His belongings are held in the evidence room. Mr. Holmes? Mr. Holmes. Okay, I'm gonna do this slowly. This funny angle camera movement is a little. It's certainly. I mean, obviously, this is much older than the Sinking City, so it's, uh, it's a little rough on the movement for me. Um, here is the evidence room. Oh, look at that. Man, I love potbelly stoves. And look at that. Weapons of mass destruction. I could use that collection. Alright, let's look around. There we go. Nelligan's belongings. These are the suspect's belongings. So we have a notebook. The notebook that we found on Peter Carey's cabin floor. Yes, with all those... Abbreviations. These abbreviations mean something. But what? But what? These abbreviations... Okay, so we don't need to look at that. So there's a ring here. Oh. Inscription from R. Dawson to my friend and partner, 1883. From R. Dawson. You can't read that, Sherlock? Come on. To my friend. To my friend. And partner. 1883. Dawson. I've seen this name before. Perhaps my archive holds the answer. Okay, so we have to go look at the archives. Look at Sherlock's archives for Dawson. A handkerchief with the initials J.H.N. John Hopley Nelligan. Is that right? Hopley? And there's a pocket knife. A pocket knife. It was used to force the door of Peter Carey's cabin. Okay. So it appears we got all the evidence we need. Yeah, the ring, a knife. So we got this, 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 and this. And that ring has the inscription Dawson on it. From R. Dawson to my friend and partner, 1883. 
Okay, so we have to search the archives. So, what is this? Oh, there's actually stuff here. There's, uh, these are character portraits. I don't know if I read this the last time. I think I did, actually. But let's re read it again real quickly for this. Just a refresher. Peter Carey was born in 1845 and was 50 years of age. He was daring and a successful seal hunter. Yes, I think I did read all this. Whitman's Lee. Tied to Whitman. Judith is the from the country. Yeah, I read this too. I don't know why I get sidetracked. Okay. Uh, Baker Street. We need to go to Baker Street. Okay, I have to take a look at my evidence. Okay. So we're looking up something about an R. Dawson. Okay, where is the archive here? Search for R. Dawson. Hmm. A vapor vaporization technique. Nope. Textiles. Nope. Toxins. King of poison. Okay, this is chemistry. Poisons and toxins. Wounds and injuries. Criminal, criminalist, criminalistics. Okay, these are research, martial arts. Okay, there's something else up there. Oh, newspapers. We can go to the newspaper. Bankruptcy. Bank. Hey, 1883. Well, this might be it. Finian condemned for murder. Dawson. Oh, Dawson and Nelligan are bankrupt. There we go. Dawson and Nelligan Investments and Fund Bankrupt. Nelligan Missing. The Dawson and Nelligan Investigate Investment Fund, a regional bank institution based in Cornwall, has declared bankruptcy as a result of heavy losses in its loan portfolio and has accordingly been assigned for liquidation. It has the 23rd largest, it was the 23rd largest bank in Britain, and its bankruptcy was the second largest on record. The liquidation of the company is a pure catastrophe for the many Cornwall families. Joshua Nelligan, one of the bankers, has since mysteriously disappeared. He has last he was last seen abroad his abroad aboard his yacht preparing for departure to Norway. Nelligan is wanted both by the police and his creditors. You to examine Here it is. Now I begin to understand that young man's story, but I am still unclear as to what connects him with the murder. It is time to ask him. All right, so we picked up the, the connection. So it was actually his father's ring. This here. is where I keep my post. Okay, this is where he receives his post. All right, so back to Scotland Yard. Oh, my gosh, a lot of... Back and forth here. All right, so we have seen the evidence. So now let's go to the interrogation. Locked. Oh, that's just dandy. This. I can barely read it off the left. It says the morgue. Do I even want to go down there right now? Okay, I'm a little nervous. I don't want to go down there. Dead bodies. I'm not too thrilled with dead bodies. Okay, there's someone in there, but it's certainly not Nelligan. Mr. Holmes? Mr. Holmes? John... Nelligan. Okay, so we have some questions to ask him, and this option here, I assume it is, um, 
it is an option to observe. Oh man, look at that guy's hands. They're all beat up. Why don't we do this first? Oh, we get to... Okay. Shabby cap. I'm glad this isn't timed. He's got a patch on his jacket. So clearly... What is this? It's got a thin... That's not a thin neck, man. Looks pretty healthy to me. Expensive fabric. So... He's wearing an expensive jacket. Oh my gosh, look at the blisters on this kid's hand. Callus. Scars. Scars and calluses. Oh dear. Yeah, you missed this. Short sleeves. So this jacket is not his. This is someone else's jacket. Something popped up just now. Yeah, what's that? Elaborate buttons. So that's our character portrait. Okay, let's ask him questions. Let's ask him about Dawson and Nell, his father. I have heard the story of Dawson and Nelligan, the West Country bankers. Yes, Joshua Nelligan was my father. I am aware that it had a bad ending. When the bank failed, it ruined half the families of Cornwall, whereupon Joshua Nelligan disappeared. My father was under extraordinary pressure. Dawson had retired. I was only ten years of age at the time, but it was still old enough to feel the shame that befell our family. My father was convinced that he could pay off all his debts if the creditors gave him time. He set sail for Hammerfest in Norway in his small yacht just a few days before an arrest warrant was issued. He left my mother a list of the securities he was taking. No word was ever heard from him again. We believed that his vessel went down, taking with it everyone and everything on board. Thank you for the story, Mr. Nelligan. At last, we are making some progress. Yes, progress. Okay, your notebook. Does this notebook belong to you? Yes. But where did you find it? I did not know... I, I, I thought I'd lost it at the hotel. What do these abbreviations mean? Oh, no. I beg you, I can't. If I told you, it would only make things worse. But I will find out eventually, Mr. Nelligan. Why would it make it worse if we found out what those that coded message was on there, the notebook. Okay, let's ask him about the sea knife. The sea knife was found near Carrie's body. Tell me, Mr. Nelligan, did Mr. Carrie try to defend himself or to attack you with it? I don't know. I didn't kill anyone. And the gold ring. The police seized this valuable ring from you. Whose is it? I didn't steal it from anyone. It has always belonged to me. Oh my goodness, I wasn't paying attention. I almost lost that option. It has always belonged to me. The ring's engraving imply that it is his father's ring. So I assume he inherited it from his father. The ring's date of engraving is many years ago. You would have been a child mm. then, hardly in any position to receive such an item from a partner. So it refers to the ring's owner, his dad. So, Mr. Nelligan, who is the true owner of the ring? 
The ring is mine. Well kept garden, father's jacket, tobacco. The ring is his. Well, let's say the father's jacket this time. No, Mr. Nelligan. I believe that the ring had belonged to your father. Mm -hmm. Oh, but, but, but how do you know? The jacket you are wearing is made of an expensive fabric that only a man of exceptional wealth could afford. You do not seem to me to be a rich man, Mr. Nelligan. Furthermore, the garment is ill-fitting. It is quite clear that it belonged to someone else. Most probably, your father. With your father gone and taking with him the family's wealth, as a little boy you had to find yourself a manual job, and it was most probably cleaning fish. You cut your hands often while working. I can tell from the scars. I'm speechless, Mr. Holmes. It, it all happened exactly as you say. Hmm. Interesting. Joshua Nelligan and Peter Carey were both at sea in Norway. There is definitely some connection between Peter Carey and Joshua Nelligan's disappearance. All right, so we just got some, it says here we got something. Nelligan, no gardener. Okay. Why is Nelligan, I mean, uh, no gardener on here? Judith Carey says that her husband took care of the garden. That does not sound feasible. She might be hiding something. Nelligan's notebooks with bloodstains on its cover, indicating that it was dropped into the pool of blood. So we've established that that book belongs to John Nelligan. Uh, Peter's body is pinned to the wall. Swift action. Peter Carey was armed with this knife. But he did not have time to use it. The murderer, the murder, the murderer acted quickly and instinctively. Break-in attempts. Several unsuccessful attempts were made to break in according to the scratches around the lock. Retrieving the notebook. The break-in attempts were made in order to recover the notebook that had been lying on a pool of the victim's blood. This proves the guilt of the person who made these attempts. Okay, so... Did I do all this? Experiment required. We need to find out whether an unskilled and untrained man could use a harpoon well enough to kill a full by fully piercing a body. Oh my goodness, so we're going to have to ex we're going to have to uh I need to stage a reconstruction. I'm sure that Watson would be happy to oblige. Okay, so... We need... There's nothing here. John Nelligan seems not to be... Not to be a usual thief. What is his role in all of this? That's a good question. The ship's log for the year 1883 might put some light on the connection between Peter Carey and Nelligan's father. Watson will be glad to help with preparations for a harpoon throwing <laughs> experiment. Oh no, poor Watson. Okay, so, where are we? Let's head back to Baker Street and talk to Watson. And then we can follow up with uh, the ship's log. Where would we get the ship's log? That might be at back at the back at the sh uh, Woodman's Lee, the shack. Okay, so let's do this first. Let's head back to Baker Street and talk to Watson and see if we can uh, investigate the, uh, the harpoon. Okay, there's our Watson. Let's go and investigate. Yeah, this is a little wa wonky. A spot of whaling, Watson. Would you care to take part? Are you serious? No, but we do need to clarify what happened on the night of Black Peter's murder. 
A reenactment, then? Is something bothering you? The sailor's knife, Watson. Why was it on the floor? Peter Carey attempted to defend himself? It is possible. But if that is the case, then it alters many things. I don't quite follow you. Tell me, my friend, what is the animal closest to man? Morphologically, I mean. Ah, I see what you're getting at, Holmes. You asked me that once before. On the Ripper case, I believe. Do you want to slit some more pig's throats? Oh, my goodness. No. Thank goodness for that. Mm. I wish to impale one with a harpoon. Oh. Wonderful. <laughs> Watson, let us pay a visit to our butcher friend in Whitechapel. We require the carcass of a well-fed pig. And the harpoon? One of the harpoons on the wall of Black Peter's cabin should do quite nicely. Okay. So we need to go to the Whitechapel butcher. But before we do that... We need to go back to Woodman's Lee. And while we're at Woodman's Lee, we can get the harpoon. I remember that was hanging on the wall. Okay, was it? yeah, this is it right here. Wow, look at that tree over there in the left corner. It almost looks like some creature. Hmm. Okay, let's take a look real quick. There's the harpoon. That should do it. That should do now it. Now I am ready for the experiment. All right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's something here. We had to, uh, something else. Ship's logs! 1883. Yes. That's the one I need. This is the crew list of the Sea Unicorn. Peter Carey. He was the master of the ship. There's Charles Ellison, first mate. Henry Joy, second mate. James Lancaster, helmsman. Patrick Carnes, harpooner. Pablo Co Coventreo, harpooner. Ned, La Ned Lands. I've been reading, um, my goodness, what book is that? I've been reading Joel Ferns, and Ned Land is a harpooner. He was on the uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, I think, or something like that, with, with Captain Nemo. Yeah, that's a, that's an inside joke right there. <laughs> Ned Land. Um, Joseph Walker, steward. John York Cook. Richard Lang, sailor. Simon Week, sailor, Isaac Page, sailor, Will Wright, sailor, Benjamin Tinsley, sailor, Matthew Granger, Rolf Talbot, Seth Fowler, Roger Fowler, or must be brothers, Thomas Lawrence, Hugh Pattons, and Henry Shepard. Now, I did notice something. I did notice, oh, there's two of them. You have Pablo Convent Coventreo and Patrick Carnes. Both have the same initials. As, P as Peter Carey, and check it out, they are both harpooners. That's interesting. Um, let's take a look at the... Log notes for June. Nothing unusual. Nothing unusual. Log notes for June. Nothing unusual. I think we read this. Log thing. notes for July. Nothing special. Nothing special. Log notes for August. These pages have been torn away. Canadian Pacific Railway, CPR, a torn piece from a bond certificate. I have seen this abbreviation somewhere very recently. There are three ways of discovering what happened in August of 1883 aboard the Sea Unicorn. The first two of these will require speaking with a dead man. The last would be to locate vital witnesses, the sailors involved in this whale hunt campaign. Hmm. Okay, I'm I'm a little lost there. Find the crew of the Sea Unicorn. A piece of stock 
See, oh hey, that might be the book. There it is, CPR. CPR. It was found inside the Sea Unicorn's ship log. A Canadian Pacific, what is that? A piece of stock exchange certificate belonging to the Canadian Pacific Railroad. It was found inside the Sea Unicorn ship log for August 1883 where the pages had been torn out. Someone had removed it and also removed a portion of what appears to be a stock certificate. Uh oh. Embezzling. We got embezzle issues. Okay, so we need to task for Wiggins. Task for Wiggins. Okay. I think I know who Wiggins is. I think that's the small urchin orphan army of Sherlock Holmes. Right? Wiggins might help to find the crew of the Sea Unicorn. He should be somewhere at Baker Street. Yeah. That's his, uh, he's using a bunch of orphans. So, but before we do that, what time am I? Okay, let's go to Whitechapel. And let's do the pig reenactment. Okay, can we move anywhere? Nope, nope. Yes, we can. Okay, there's nothing here. Ugh, this is a butcher's place, all right. So I guess we need to talk to... Uh, oh, look at that picture right there. Bearings pork chart. The cheek, the shoulder, which holds the Boston butt, the fat back, and the blade steak. Number three, the picnic is also the hocks. Number four, the loin gives you the tenderloin, pork chops, baby back ribs. Baby back ribs, was that something that they coined back in those days? Hmm. Sirloin and the Canadian bacon are all from the back. And the five is the rib, rib roast, spare ribs. And six, the belly, where we get our bacon, pork belly, and pancetta. Seven is the ham. Shank, the rump, and eight, the feet. Trotters. Okay. I didn't realize. Oh, look at that head right there. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Let's talk to uh, Watson here. Well, here we are in the preparation room. I can't say that I like the smell of it much. What do you intend to do? To indulge myself in a little experiment. The challenge of lancing a pig's carcass with a heavy harpoon. A little experiment? Stand aside, Watson. This might be dangerous. I am not well practiced in this exercise, yet. Holmes, you should aim for the mark in order to perform the most reliable test. Oh my gosh. Hold breath. Aim. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hold breath. Aim. Come on. Oh. Hold breath. Aim. Oh. Lord, oh, Lord I have mercy. It. Did you just miss? <laughs> oh, Lord. <clears throat> Holmes, you should try to aim better. And throw as hard as you can. Ah, uh, yes. That's what I'm trying, man. That's what I'm trying. Okay. Was that even... Was that me? The harpoon has struck the body, but with insufficient strength to pierce it straight through. Holmes, you should try to aim. I know, I know, And throw Watson. as hard as you can. I think, I think the, yeah, it's getting wider down at the bottom there for me because I suck. Oh, there we go. This is the best possible result that I could get. Do you see, Watson? Throwing a harpoon and pinning a man to a wall requires either exceptional strength and training or diabolical luck. If it was luck, then it was a chance in a thousand that night. Well, yes. 
Let us leave now. All right. But before we go, I, I suppose I'll have to pay for all these carcasses you've happily mangled. Very well, but please hurry. Of course. <laughs> oh, Sherlock, he's just completely... Okay, there's something up there in the... Uh, strength requirements. Uh, experiments proved that a similar result with a harpoon can only be achieved with extraordinary strength and or hard training. So I don't think, at least in my brain right now, that John Nelligan could do it. He's got cuts all over his hand because he's trying to cut fish. And he's got, according to his, uh, Sherlock's Mr. Holmes observation, he's got a thin neck, which means he's weak. Strength requirements. There we go. Retrieving the book notebook. The break-in attempts were made in order to recover the note. Okay, that we got that already. This is what we just got. A feat of strength. It requires a much greater strength than that of, of the average man to be able to pierce a man's chest with a harpoon all the way through the wall. A degree of skill would be, would most likely be necessary. Two men in cooperation might achieve the same results. Two men. So there's the possibility that two people could have done that. Or, lucky throw. There is a remote possibility that an unskilled and untrained man could manage to pin Peter Carey to the wall with a harpoon. Now, Sherlock Holmes is not an untrained man. He's untrained in throwing harpoons, but he's still a pretty... I mean, I suck at it, as you can see. It took me three or four times to do it. But in my brain's conversation is that Holmes is deducing that an untrained person, unskilled and untrained, could not could manage to pin him to the wall. But that is there is a remote possibility. So I think this is more likelihood. What is that phrase? If you eliminate all the impossible, however improbable, what remains is how uh, sorry, what remains, however improbable, is most likely what it is. So I'll get that quote once, right once, uh, sometime <laughs> in the future. Okay, so let's select this one. All right, so. There's nothing else on here, is there? Okay, so let's go back to the clues. Break an attempt does not has it does not has nothing to do with the gardener. So let's so let's hop out. Okay, so what do we do now? We go back to here. And well, okay, hold on. Wiggins. Wiggins. So we need to go back to. Baker Street. Oh, I picked the wrong place. Back to Baker Street, not Scotland Yard. Oh my goodness. Something new, Watson. I have the list of sailors who were aboard the Sea Unicorn. We shall soon learn what happened to Nelligan's father. I have only to find them. Let us hope they are still working at the harbour. I think that if you pretend you're from Scotland Yard... I doubt it, Watson. And really, I would prefer that all of this remains quiet for now. But I have another solution. I'll call in the specialist. And who might they be? The secret police division of Baker Street. Ah, you mean young Wiggins and his gang? Yes. Believe me, you'll receive more useful assistance from these little urchins than from a dozen yard detectives. Those children are everywhere. They see and hear everything, and they are cunning. All they lack is organization. I'll summon them. 
How will you do that? There is always a watch beneath our window. I have only to call him. A watch. See... Holmes has some respect for Scotland Yard, but clearly from that statement alone right there, he does not believe that a lot of the inspectors of Scotland Yard are uh, up to the task of, of uh, being an inspector at the yard. Is this thing still working? Oh, Mr. Holmes, why do you have this thing stuck on that window, you peeping Tom? Oh, there's poor Toby. Brave Toby. The best nose in the British Empire. Okay, let's open the window. We're going to call Wiggins here. Wiggins, could you come upstairs, please? At your service, Mr. Holmes. Wiggins, I need you to track down certain people for me. I'll give you a list. You can read, can't you? Big Oliver from our gang. He can, as his father is the coachman of a famous lawyer. Fascinating. Here is the list of sailors. Sailors? Easy. Just got to look where the rum and the red lights are. Sorry to trouble you, Mr. Holmes, but the inspector asks that you come to the station as soon as possible. Uh, thank you. I'll be there shortly. Find the crew of the unicorn completed. Okay, let's look at this. Uh, okay, so I guess uh, Wiggins is on the case. So now we have to. Lestrade might have some new facts about the case. So we've been requested to return to Scotland Yard. So let's see what Lestrade has for us. Cutscene. Mr. Holmes, I'm glad to see you. As always, what happened? We have a new suspect, Liam Hurtley. I'm thinking that this case will be resolved very quickly now. Interesting. Great tell. Well, the constable that I left at Woodman's Lee noticed a suspicious individual prowling around during the night. Do you have him here? Yes. He refuses to speak with us. But we'll make him talk. Let us hope so. Ah, yes, and one more thing. The constable told me that at the time of his arrest, the fellow was writing a letter. Hmm. Do you have it? Of course. It's in the evidence room, at your disposal. Admit that for once, Mr. Holmes, Scotland Yard is a step ahead of you, eh? Mm, breathtaking. Breathtaking. Big Inspector, Scotland Yard completed, so let's take a look at where we need to go now. Um, what time am I? I'm coming close to the end here on this episode, so we need to wrap things up without going, getting too wrapped up in um, dialogue. So, we have to examine the belongings of Liam Hurtley and then interrogate the new suspect at Scotland Yard, Liam Hurtley. And I think, I think that's where we're gonna leave it for this episode. We will return on the next one and, and, and uh, interrogate, actually review the uh, evidence from Liam Hurtley and then interrogate him. And hopefully we'll follow up with Wiggins' this stuff as well. So I appreciate everybody joining me today on this episode of Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishment. If you like my kind of goofy content, my uh, spastic gameplay, although I'll, I'll admit there's not a lot of spasm, spas spasticness in this, ep in this uh, series. But uh, if you like my kind of goofiness, click on that subscribe button and click on that bell to get notified when I upload new content. And if you like, go ahead and click on that uh, like button as well, because that does help me get uh, into the uh, YouTube algorithm and hopefully get the channel out to more potential viewers. But 
that's going to be it for this episode. I appreciate again everyone for joining me. And I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a good one.